Hello and welcome back to another episode of Mole in Hell, your Diablo 4 podcast. My name is KS Mole and today we have episode 7. I said that episode 5 was last week, but it was actually episode 6. Look, counting was never my strong suit. But we are back with episode 7 and today we have like a lot of mixed topic to talk about. I think like the biggest... Uh, the biggest topics we have are the Diablo 4 system requirements. We kind of knew already because, well, they were already out there when the beta was a thing, right? We needed some system requirements so that people know if they can play the beta or not. And now, of course, we do know the system requirements for the full release version. Surprise hasn't really changed that much. And surprise Typical Blizzard system requirements, uh, if you have a 10-year-old PC hanging around somewhere and that thing is still running, then you have a pretty high chance that you can actually run Diablo 4. Or to put it simple, if you were able to play uh, Diablo 4 in the beta, then yes, you will also be able to play uh, Diablo 4 when it comes out. But we will talk about that. Then we talk a little bit more about a few endgame things Blizzard finally told us in a, in a recent video. Like, it's so weird. Can I, can I just say that? Um, like, Blizzard is putting out videos where... They are like giving us information and they are talking about like quite a bit of interesting topics. But they are so hidden in the whole PR speech and a lot of the a lot of the like boring points that if you are not going through all the information which is already known to you, you might miss out on some really cool info. And it's this wait a minute. Why? Why are you doing this, Blizzard? Uh, like, don't get me wrong. I understand that. Um, I understand totally that not everyone is completely up to date with, like, Diablo information, right? Not everyone is up to date with that. And some people who are coming in, they need some guidance where to go from here and what what to know about the game, but. It, <sighs> It's so weird that they are now pushing this out this close to the release, especially when they have already talked about this, when there was already a beta, and they are now making a video about talent trees and uniques. And it's this, huh? I, I think everyone who cares about that kind of stuff already knows about it at this point, right? It's it's a little bit it's a little bit weird. I uh, I, I'm not sure if I would say it's useless, but it still feels odd. And, well, also, good news, it is now a month till the official release of Diablo 4. Well, a little bit more than a month, but depending on if you if you pre-ordered or if you didn't pre-order and all that stuff, of course, or if you got the, um, the deluxe edition, not pre-ordering. Pre-ordering is not giving you shit. You have to get like the collector's edition or the deluxe edition, of course. But we are now about a month away to the official release. Uh, that also means for the channel, by the way, that we are now slowly ramping up um, more content, more Diablo 4 content. Um, this will probably happen around the second week of May, where we will have like um, more Diablo 4 content in general. I also want to create a few guides for leveling. So what is like the build you should run to level fast or what I believe you should run. Uh, we will make some videos about that. And yeah, then there will be more content in general, which is great. And can't wait till the Diablo 4 is coming out. So we, we are slowly getting there. Uh, I say second week of May because this week um, I have some other projects which definitely need some attention and again we can wait a little bit longer also don't forget in two weeks we will have the real server stress test open beta thing coming up it's man 
<laughs> uh, they hope. Yeah, this is the pre-order early access open beta. Then this is the open beta. And now we have an actual open beta, which we will not call open beta because we already called an open beta the thing we did before. So we have to find another name for it. <sighs> it's, it's always hilarious to me when game developers try to be special with how they name stuff. And I never... I, I never get this PR stuff. I never do. Because everyone knows what it is and how it works. So it's like, yeah, okay. Okay. Um, but yeah, we, we will get another uh, beta thingy. Um, I, I'm actually... I would like to get the horn. Now, I don't know if the horn you can get for the mount from the world boss is locked to the beta. Or if you can still get it after the fact. Blizzard hasn't really answered that. And I hate where they are doing this. I assume it will be available after the beta because it would be kind of effed if they are not doing that. Because the time frame they're giving you to get this horn is pretty low. You have to start a new character. You have to reach level 20. And you have to beat the world boss. If you were a normal player, like casual, just, just wanting to play a little bit, level 20 is still steep, especially if you don't know what you were doing. So, yeah. Weird. I, I'm, I'm pretty sure they are not telling us about it because they want that people are um, stress test the servers, right? And if they would tell people that the horn is also available later on in the full release, then people would just be like, oh, well, then I don't really need to come online because I've seen everything else. Like, this is the reason why people want to come back. Right, like why why people want to reach level 20 because they want to get the horn. But if they are finding out that they can just get that uh, later on, then it's like, yeah, okay, so I don't have to stress it, right? So I assume that's the case. I really do. But we have to see. We have to see. Um, but let's talk about the system requirements a little bit. So I, I talked about this before. If you have a PC which was medium 10 years ago, literally 10 years ago, you are good. Like you need Windows 10 for it, right? At least 64 bit at least. So that's that's a thing, but that's I think what is it 99% of the people are now using like Windows 10 or something like that or already moved on to Windows 11, but as a CPU, you need an Intel Core i5 2500K or an AMD FX 8350. Holy moly. Like, the FX series was the series before the Ryzen. And this isn't even the 9000 series. This is the 8000 series. So... I think the AMD FX8350 came out, let me see, when, when did that thing came exactly out? Oh my god, it came out on October 23rd, 2012. 12 years. And don't forget, the FX series of AMD was shit. I'm sorry, AMD, I'm, I'm using an AMD CPU right now before anybody is like, oh, you're an Intel fanboy. Let's not do that, please. Um, but the FX series was shit in comparison to what Intel was already doing. So, again, if you have a 12 year old mediocre CPU, you're good. Uh, you need 8 GB of RAM, which is like standard nowadays. It's like the bare minimum. Uh, you need a GeForce GTX 660 or a Radeon R9 280. Now, we could argue if you should compare an R9 280 with a 660, but I think those cards are also over 10 years old, aren't they? Let me let me see very quickly. 
the 6600 came out, yeah, also in 2012. Mm -hmm. A $200 card. Oh my God, can you, do you remember when graphic cards were like high end at 400 to 500 dollars? And people were like, no way, you bought a GPU for 400 dollars? Are you crazy? Yeah, I remember those times. But again, it's not, not really a biggie. And they even say down below under the system requirements, and I shit you not, Diablo 4 will attempt to run on hardware below minimum specifications, including HDDs, dual-core CPUs, and integrated GPUs. However, the game experience might be significantly diminished. Dual-core CPUs. Um, the, wow. <laughs> wow. It's, it's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. It's, again, it's Blizzard. Like we, I, I don't, I don't really think we have to, we have to talk too much about it. Um, it's Blizzard. If if you have a mediocre PC, you will be able to play this. That's their appeal, and that's exactly what they are doing. By the way, if you want to play this game on Ultra with 4K, um, you better have 32 gigabyte of RAM, because that's what they are literally telling telling you to have. And for GPUs, you need a 3080 or an RTX 40 series for fully supported DLSS 3, or you need a Radeon RX 6800 and you need a Intel Core i7 8700K or an AMD Ryzen 7 2700X. Hey, that's my CPU. Interesting. But yeah, again, nothing. Nothing too outrageous. And yes, the game will be 90 gigabyte. Yeehaw. Still not as crazy as some of the uh, other games as of late, but still quite, quite big. Um, but let's also talk a little bit more about the end game they talked about. So this is a pretty big news. At least for me. They announced that you do not have to level another character when you have once reached the end game with your first character. You can jump immediately to the end game. And first of all, that's a big news because it's different from what they have told us a few months ago. And second, this is such a big deal to me. I, I cannot explain to you how much I hate leveling with twinks. Well, I hate leveling in general because most of the time in games, it's wasted time. It doesn't do anything. It doesn't add anything, right? And that you can just for your second character to decide to skip all the things again. And apparently you still have to do a few things here and there, um, but apparently you can immediately skip to like level 50. And I think they looked at Lost Ark and they were like, yeah, you know what? That's so, that looks pretty good because Lost Ark is kind of offering you well, not just kinder. They're offering you a way how you can immediately jump into Endgame for free. Right? And I always loved that so much. Like, you will figure out your class even at level 50. And the gameplay doesn't really, doesn't really change that much. So you can just start to collect, um, like, Endgame stuff. This is also why I love Diablo 3 in that aspect so much, because leveling was non-existent. Like, even if you had nobody to help you, if you didn't have the equipment, leveling was merely like four to five hours long. And there was without any of the things you could unlock. If you, if you would use, like, some of the tools they had available to you, you could level a second character in 
an hour to end game so yeah i like again i'm i'm absolutely on board for that love it it's great it's it's what i wanted from this game and i'm just so thankful for that right so good to them and again this is different to what they have told us because they they kind of told us that they will have level boosts um in the battle pass i just assume that they mean they have level boosts for at level 50 on right because that's that's where the real end game begins and i assume also that's where the leveling begins right from from level one to level 50 i think it will be pretty quick like for my for my first character which was a barb and i did a lot of bullshit wasn't up to snuff the whole thing was pretty abysmal and it took me about mm, nine hours to get to level 25 so assume another nine hours on top of that and then well another 10 hours so about 20 hours but again there was with a barbarian severely hamstrung and also some other things like playing for the first game learning the game right like there's so many things like i'm i'm kind of curious i will play a barb in the second beta and i will see how quickly i can get to level 20. I will actually try to gain level 20 as quickly as possible. Speaking of endgame, a bit of a bad news. Well, depending on how you want to see it. But Blizzard made it clear that mounts will unlock through completing a quest line as you progress naturally through the main story campaign. And... As far as they have concerned, uh, co- confirmed, not concerned, confirmed was the word, that quest line will unlock by the end of the story campaign. So you will not get your mount until the end of the story campaign. Good news only the first character has to do this. Every other character afterwards will immediately have their mounts. Doesn't matter if they have to level or if you decide that they will start at level 50. And that's cool. I, I'm i okay with that. Like, keep, keep in mind, they have been working on this world for so long. And they just don't want that people will rush through the whole content even more than they already do. Right? Like, let's let's be real here. Let's be real here. People will rush through this. I strongly assume that we will probably hear about reach people reaching level fifty by the end of the first day or the second day. Like, it, it really depends how the service will survive. Right, I think that's that's very important to note. But I wouldn't be surprised that after a day or two days, we will hear people reaching level fifty. Yeah. Now reaching level hundred, though, that's a different topic. Um, Blizzard has been saying that it will probably take you around a hundred hours to get to level hundred. Now again. If there is one thing I have learned about Blizzard's assessment when it comes to <laughs> when it comes to how long people take to achieve something in the Blizzard game, then they are always severely underestimating the player base. <laughs> um, I, I have not been playing Blizzard games since um, since Diablo One and Tides of Darkness. I have played Warcraft One, but actually after Warcraft Two, kind of funny. Um, and if, if there is one thing Blizzard has always underestimated is how fast and how good some of the players are. 
like Diablo 3 will always fascinate me where people were reaching Inferno, which was the new difficulty in Diablo 3 back in the day. And they could just eradicate it by the mobs. Every single player gets just eradicated. And Blizzard is like, what? Yeah, duh. We haven't balanced it yet. We didn't thought that you were going to Inferno in one or two days. What? No. We were thinking we have a few weeks after the release before you're reaching Inferno and before you're reaching the end game there. Like, we haven't balanced this. What are you doing? I was like, well, why haven't you balanced this yet? The game is out. Um, that's, again, I, I would never forget that. So, yeah, Blizzard, Blizzard has been always underestimating the player base. But... There isn't there isn't too much else. Um, the one the one thing I'm still a little bit concerned about is PvP. Like I know for quite a bit of people, PvP nobody cares, right? Like there is there is a good portion of people who hear PvP and they will scuff at it. That's fine. I, I always believe that you shouldn't force people to do PvP, and it should be decision but for the people who decide to do it blizzard has been <sighs> how to put it not very convincing like well they have they've made it pretty clear what we have to expect from pvp it will be unbalanced it will be kind of chaotic and their plans for pvp they will look at it after they are done with saving the PvE and saving the people from the issues they will encounter in that area. So, which doesn't really fill me with confidence. Because the problem is always, okay, I get it. 95% of the player base will probably pay, play PvE, not PvP. You want to take care of that first. Why is there PvP in that game then? Why are you putting something in the game which is the second fiddle? Which is not really gaining attention for maybe the first two months? Then just don't put it in there. Because the reality is people will try something and when they realize it's shit, they will never touch it again. They will, they will remember those bad memories for far too long. Right? And so... I, I, I wished... I wished that they would have the capacities to also... Uh, take care of PvP, but again, from what we are hearing from Blizzard right now, it's just they barely have the capacities as it is because the company is apparently in a not so great state when it comes to keeping the people in house. And yeah, we we have to see, we have to see. But yeah, uh, we will now slowly ramp up uh, the Diablo content production a little bit. Um, if, if you have been wondering like wow Mo you, you released so many videos around the beta and then you stopped why is that because well the beta stopped I I think I have basically covered everything which makes sense in the beta and I'm also not the person who is like re-uploading their videos now and then I, have, I see that too many YouTubers doing nowadays that they're basically re-uploading their videos, just changing the thumbnail in the title, but it is basically the same topic, just like basically the beginning is now the end and the end is now the beginning when it comes to topics. And I, ugh, nah, no nah, thanks, not doing that. Um, but yeah, we will now slowly start to ramp up the content again. 
Um, there were definitely a little bit more co content around the Bader again, even though I, I don't think there will be too much. And then we are slowly preparing for the release. And when the release comes, well, I can guarantee you there will be a lot more content here on the channel. And I would love to cover a lot of PvP, even if it is chaos. I I I order I I, I order lol. I always kind of strive in like this chaos where there aren't guides yet, where there isn't everything like an orderly fashion, and people are just following guides down to the T, and everyone has basically to fend for themselves. I'm always pretty good at that, and yeah, maybe maybe the first weeks of Diablo PvP could be good. With that said, folks, please don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done yet. Uh, if you were listening to this on some of the podcasts websites like Spotify, uh, you can find me on youtube.com slash at molerp. And we are doing much more content there. With that said, thanks so much for watching. Stay safe. And I'll see you next time for a new episode of Bowl in Hell. Welcome to Hell. Bye-bye.